All right, guys, it's time to get serious. We have a little less than a week before Twin Peaks starts, and there's one last thing we haven't talked about yet. We're gonna talk about it right now. Uh, this is Firewalk With Me. It's a prequel movie. It was a prequel to the TV show, and here we go. We're gonna talk about it right now. So Firewalk With Me is a prequel movie to the entire Twin Peaks saga, so let's get that out of the way first. This is mainly Laura Palmer's story before she was murdered, and it's way weirder than the show was, believe me. We start off with Agent Chet Desmond getting a young Agent Sam Stanley, who is quite good in his own right. He's going to assist Chet in the murder investigation into Teresa Banks, who was alluded to early on in the Twin Peaks show, but never really talked about much. Gordon Cole is here setting up the FBI getting into this whole affair. Since Gordon Cole is my favorite character, it's also fitting he's in the best scene in the movie right at the beginning, which we'll just let play out so you can get a feel for what this film is like. Basically, it's talking in code that only the cool agents understand. Yep, Twin Peaks. That whole scene meant local authorities are going to be trouble with some family member in federal prison, along with drugs. It's a teachable moment for young Kiefer Sutherland, and also the scene most worth watching. Anywho, once Chet gets up there to Deer Meadow, they're not quite in Twin Peaks, he has to knock out a deputy to get some real answers from the sheriff, who is locally famous for bending some rebar, I guess. This is the first time we see a murder victim with a letter under the fingernail. They end up at her trailer park, where they see the ring she was missing that has the insignia of the weird petroglyph found in the Owl Cave in Twin Peaks. You know, Black Lodge type shit. Chet finds the ring under another trailer and then goes missing. Then we get the scene of Dale Cooper in Philadelphia and David fucking Bowie, who has been to the Black Lodge or something, and then just literally vanishes into thin air after he was never even there, even though he was there, after walking past a Cooper on security camera that isn't even there anymore. I can't even explain this shit, it's so bonkers. Cooper goes to the trailer park and knows exactly where Chet went looking based off his crazy Tibetan mind powers and finds out the trailer is gone and belonged to an old lady and her grandson, the same people Donna saw doing Meals on Wheels later, even though they weren't really there. Does any of this make sense to you? Okay, a year later and we're in Twin Peaks with Laura. Donna has been recast and the whole gang is here. Bobby, Mike, and oh god, more James? Didn't we get enough of this shithead in the show? Laura's doing the booger sugar, so we know she's already in deep at this time in her life, but at least she's not a turkey. Or maybe she is? Either way, she bangs James, and Bobby confronts her afterwards that he couldn't find her. Even though he plays tough and angry, we see our first glimpse of Laura's secret mutant power to make a man do whatever she wants. You can see how much she has Bobby wrapped around her pinky. Asshole. Man. And I look down and my shoes are so far away from me. Man, I can't believe it. She goes and gets her diary to write all about it, and she finds a page missing and freaks out. We get more Harold, who again is useless, but Laura says Bob is real and has been raping her since she was 12, and he took the pages, and he wants to be her, or he'll kill her. Yowza. This is how Harold gets the diary we see in the show. Laura goes home and sees Bob looking for the diary, and then she realizes Leland is Bob. She's been getting down with her daddy for years. Gross. Later when she gets home for dinner, Leland gets fucking pissed she didn't wash her hands. Go wash your hands, Laura. Also, it's a very awkward dinner. We get some Dale Cooper in the Black Lodge trying to convince Laura to not wear the ring that will basically doom her soul, and Annie tells her Dale is stuck in the lodge and to write it in her diary. Laura goes out to the bar, and Donna gets jealous that she won't take her with her into her sordid double life. So, Donna follows and tries to be tough and impress Laura by being just as cool, but of course she's in way overhead, and Laura has to save her. Also, boobs. It's actually really gross. Yeah, this ain't the TV show. Laura goes driving with Leland and Gerard, er, Mike shows up, and she smells scorched engine oil. That's a recurring thing, it seems. Mike yells at Leland slash Bob and tells Laura it's him. We see Leland with Teresa Banks, the first victim before Laura. We also see he almost had a foursome with her, Renette, and his daughter, but chickened out. Teresa had the ring on, if that helps her clear anything up. Laura does some nose candy and her stash runs out, so she makes Bobby set up a drug deal. While out scoring in the woods, Bobby has to murder a Canadian, I really don't know why it went down like that, the dude just tried to pull a gun on Bobby. And that's pretty gruesome. But Laura couldn't give two shits about it. James is not Arnold Schwarzenegger, so he shouldn't try to be. Loser. Leland drugs his wife so he can go bang his daughter. You know, family values. Gross. Laura tricks James to drive her out so she can have a foursome with Renette, Jacques, and Leo. Dick move. Basically, she's given up, she's had enough of life. We get to see all the stuff that is alluded to in the show, the poker chip, the bird, all that. Mike saves Renette after she sees an angel, I don't know, and Laura puts on the ring, dooming her soul right before Leland slash Bob murders her. He then goes to the Black Lodge to do a Michael Jackson's moonwalker and float around. Then it just sort of ends like this. Okay. 
So Dale hangs out with Laura and she sees an angel or something. I don't really know what to tell you. And that's it. Laura dies and the show begins. Yep. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, go enjoy the new show and take pride in the fact that you are now part of the Twin Peaks Club. And uh, if you like being a part of clubs, if you like having membership cards in your wallet, lots of them, I know of another club, an Alpha Rookie Club, that's looking for members. Go check out our Patreon and you will not get a membership card, but you get to watch bloopers. Go join our Patreon. <laughs>